call is from Daryl Whiter. This call will be recorded and subject to monitoring at any time. To accept this call, press 5. To block this call and all future calls, press 7. To reject this call, hang up now. You may begin speaking now. This is I'm Daryl Carl Whiting. You know, I'm coming to you from Federal Correctional Institution of Schofield in um, Pennsylvania. Um, now, when I wrote was writing the book, I knew that they would, you know, probably or possibly could use the book against me in court. You understand what I'm saying? But because of the way that the streets was going, you know what I'm saying, the gang language was, you know, was doing you know, a lot of stuff that, you know what I'm saying, was wild and crazy. I was sort of like, yo, you know, it's the older generation, it was the older generation, you know, responsibility to try to guide the younger generation in a more positive way. You understand what I'm saying? And we failed them. You understand what I'm saying? So to try to take responsibility for some of the failures, you understand what I'm saying, that we, you know, caused for them. Yeah, you know, I said, I wrote the book trying to give them, you know, some insight on it. If you're going to do it, you understand what I'm saying, do it right. Don't do it wrong. You know what I'm saying? So take it to another level. You understand what I'm saying? So I basically like sacrificed myself to try to get them some insight on if you're going to get yourself involved in this here, then go about doing it, you know what I'm saying, in a positive or constructive way with the view towards getting out of it eventually. You know what I'm saying? So actually the book is like a five-part book. You understand what I'm saying? And it evolved until like, you know, they become militias and then they like, you know, helping to defend the country, you understand what I'm saying, from, from, from drugs, you know what I'm saying, terrorism, you know, both home and abroad, you know what I'm saying? So it's a whole, you know, uplifting process to it, you know what I'm saying? They didn't give me a chance, you know what I'm saying, to, um, to put out the whole book, but when I start to get out, then I'm going to finish the whole five book series so that people can get the whole ball view of where I was going. I was just going to take a negative, you understand what I'm saying, and transform it into a positive, you know? You know, because the book was a mixture of what's true, you know, some some some, some facts, and then uh, you know, you know, a mixture of some fiction stuff. So you know, so she took what she felt was true, and she used that, you know, uh, against, me, you know, yeah, because she said like within the book, you know, say I, I I was um I came home and um I was um you know retaliating against you know the people who had testified against me at trial, you know, so they so so she was concerned with whether or not you know I was gonna kill the two girls. Who testified at trial? I'm like, yo, they my friends, you know what I'm saying? I'm in contact with them now. They be candidate testimony on me. They not fair, they right, you know what I'm saying? And she was like, oh yeah, right. And um, she went to look for the affidavits where they be candidate testimony. She couldn't find them, and that was because I didn't file it in the first circuit. I filed it when I was in Florida in the 11th circuit because you had to file an actual innocent claim in the state in which you was incarcerated at the time. So when she didn't see the affidavits from them you know, um, agreeing to allow me to use their name and tell the story, she, you know, felt that I basically let out of line, and then she used that to basically deny my release, you know. Uh, that's how that came, that was, that's how all that went down. Well, see, actually, I was in the, the first kingpin in Boston. I was the first kingpin that was given a life sentence with narcotics. Because there was one black dude that was from Boston, from around the Roxbury, Dorchester area, who had a, um, a 848 or CCE charge before I did. You know, um, CCE stands for Continuing Criminal Enterprise, but he didn't he didn't get a life sentence. I was I was just the first one who got a life sentence for it. Let's talk about these rumors of you snitching. Well, first let me let me explain to you how the whole rumor came out, right? And um, 1992, while I was in Leavenworth Prison, right, I gave an interview to CNN, and then in 1993. I gave an interview to A and E, you know, dealing with something about the Burger King gangsters. Well, anyway, after that interview, right, they interviewed the prosecutor on my case, whose name was Paul Kelly, them to hear his side of the story. And during his interview, he made the statement that I tried to put all the blame on my co-defendant, right. And so from that, people assumed said, "Oh, he's doing the Nino Brown," you know, what I'm saying like Nino Brown's from the movie um, New Jack City, where Nino tried to put all the blame, I think, on Raheem. You know, what I'm saying, saying his um his wife cousin or brother or something, you understand what I'm saying, you know, without actually knowing what was going on, you understand what I'm saying, and so that's how the, the rumor came about, right, now the reason why the prosecutor did that, I couldn't understand, I said, damn, damn, why are he going to say something like that, you understand what I'm saying, you know, which he know that's going to put me, put my, my, my safety in jeopardy in prison, you understand what I'm saying, but I understand the trial state, say that I'm a rat or whatever, right, yeah, and, um, I could understand it, but then I thought about what he was saying in trial and, tri and stuff like that because kids in the, in the neighborhood were, were looking up to me. So 
So I guess he wanted to shatter my image, the image of me to them, so that I didn't look like I was all that, so that they wouldn't try to imi you know, imitate me, you know what I'm saying, and, and, and be like me, you know what I'm saying? So he put out the rumor that I, you know, that I was, I, I was a rat, you know what I'm saying? And then, um, as I understand, though, too, like, in about uh, maybe 2010, something. This call is from a federal prison. Um, they, he, he, this, this magazine interviewed the um, United States Attorney on, on, the, on the case named Wayne Budd. And Wayne Budd made a statement in the, argument, in, in, in the magazine that I was supposed to have told on four of my co-defendants or something like that. And somebody said, man, where did he get this from? You understand what I'm saying? But then I thought back on it. I said, okay, now I know what he did because three of the dudes that was dead on my case that was selling drugs to the agent and what have you, you understand what I'm saying? When I was on trial and testifying on the stand, he asked me about it. I said, like, yo, they were selling their own drugs. So in, those, so in regards to those three individuals that were dead, I was selling, I said that they were selling their own drugs. Right, which the prosecutors and both both incidents never felt I was lying anyway. You understand? Saying no matter what I said, they felt I was lying anyway. So now everybody was selling drugs for you or whatever, whatever. You understand? Saying and we know they they wasn't um you know they wasn't selling their own drugs. After the prosecutor stated that um I put all of the, the blame on my, or tried to put all the blame on my co-defendant, the reason why he um said that is because um uh, we was originally charged in the um, first indictment with um with conspiracy that involved like nine or ten people that wasn't um, part of the New York boys or people that we didn't even know, right? So from that day, right, we was going to our defense which became a uh, multiple conspiracy defense. And one of the multiple conspiracy defense is that um, if you find a defendant guilty of a conspiracy other than the conspiracy mentioned in the indictment, then you must find that defendant not guilty. That would have been the instructions for the multiple conspiracy, right? Okay, so... um. There was like 50 of us charged in the indictment, but up to 50, only like, say, six of them, five or six people had any involvement with the undercover agent. You know what I'm saying? But in, 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 in return, right, um, me and uh, another one of my co defendants, my, uh, like they called my first lieutenant, we was charged with 24 counts of aiding the veteran in the distribution of cocaine. Even though we wasn't present during the transactions, you know what I'm saying, we were still charged with aiding and abetting this trans, trans, transaction because they were saying that if it wasn't for us, that the drugs wouldn't have been distributed. And you know what I'm saying, and that because they were my drugs. Right, so, you know, our offense was multiple conspiracy. Everybody was going to take the weight for the drugs that they had sold the agent, you know what I'm saying, to prove that there wasn't no overall one conspiracy. And this way, you know what I'm saying, we would all would have been the charge, right? But then two of the dudes who actually had dealings with the agent, they became cooperating witnesses. Two other people, they was on the run. Like later on, one of them turned himself in, and then he, still, he started cooperating, you know. But anyway, how I had got caught up in it is that my, 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 my defense was also in an entrapment defense because the agent had came to me like four or five times trying to tell me something about my man had sold him some drugs and that he showed it him. And I'm telling him, like, yo, I don't have anything to do with that. I don't know what you're talking about. Just then, then I don't want to get involved with that. You understand what I'm saying? So after about the, the fourth or fifth time, he came back to me and he told me that, yo, if, you know, if you don't straighten this out, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to end up doing something to your man, right? Like I said, I was like, what? So now I'm heated because he was coming around to my business at my club, you know, getting coming to my office, you know, trying to see me, tell me this here. So then um, I said, yo, come on with me, man. And so then I took him down to the project and I told my man, like, yo, if you owe this dude with anything, man, give him what you owe him and stop fucking with him. And that's how I got caught up in one of the transactions with my man. And then, you know what I'm saying, and my man said, nah, he's cool, I'm all right, well. So I told myself, yo, if you want to keep on fucking with him, that's on you, man. You understand what I'm saying? I would suggest that you leave him alone. You understand what I'm saying? And then another time, he gave me um, $5,000 to get my man, so I got caught up in that. And then one time I came up in the office when they was counting money, and I was caught on tape. You know what I'm saying? You know, talking, you know, while they was um, conducting their, their business. So those those three things, or you know, those three counts, there was the only three counts that they had any um, information on me, and you know, um, in, in regard to to the conspiracy or any involvement in the conspiracy. And you know what I'm saying? In order for me to um, present my entrapment defense, I had to take my to take the stand and explain how you understand know saying that um, you know um, I had told him for three or four times that you know I didn't sell drugs, and he kept pursuing it, and that's how he entrapped me. You know what I'm saying? So. My man, he was agreed to take the weight for the for the three charges that he got me involved with, you know. So when I took the stand, 
those are the three charges that I put the blame on him for, right? But at the same time, I was telling, you know, the, um, I testified for him that he wasn't no drug seller and that the agent entrapped him too by enticing him by telling him, like, yo, he would give him a thousand dollars, you know what I'm saying, to, you know, to, 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 buy, to, to buy drugs for him, and my man would go and cop the drugs from somebody and give it to the agent, you know. This call is from a federal prison. But he, you know, really didn't sell any drugs. You know, so that's how the prosecutor said that, you know, I tried to put all the blame on my man, you know what I'm saying, without telling the whole true story. He only told a half of the story, you know, and um, that's how all that came came about. You know, and they, I know this, I explained most of that in the book, and that was part of the reason why I wrote the book, to clear that up, you know, let everybody know what actually had transpired during that, you know. So, but yes, at the same time, to make me look bad, you know what I'm saying, they put out these real rumors. You know what I'm saying, which has no fa no factual to it. You know what I'm saying. At one point, I, I even tried to get a couple of attorneys. I was like, "Yo, I would like to, you know, sue these prosecutors for slander." You understand what I'm saying? And and, and libel because they, you know, they kicking dirt on my name, and at the same time, it's being done maliciously. You know what I'm saying? Because they put my life in safety and jeopardy in prison by putting out these false rumors on. Me. You understand what I'm saying? But the two or three attorneys that I have spoken to being as for prosecutors and stuff and being because of my, my you know, my street reputation and stuff anyway, they really didn't want to pursue it. You know what I'm saying? But I basically left that alone. You understand what I'm saying? But as far as any truth to being said about that, people that know me, you can't ask nobody in Boston if I'm a rat. You can't have nobody in my hood if I'm a rat. Out of my 49 code of friends, you, you know, and you, know, you, ain't, you ain't gonna hear nothing about me being no rat. You understand what I'm saying? That's totally against my whole, whole nature. You know what I'm saying? In fact, like, but the um, story was first told, right? Um, they put me in, 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 um, in protective custody in the prison. They called me in the middle of the night and said, hey, yo, come to protective custody. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You know, they saying on, on, on TV that you was a rat. I'm like, man, that ain't no rat. You know what I'm saying? They yo, we got to do it for your protection, right? But then these two old Gs from New York, no, 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 you know, old timers from New York, they went to the administration and said, look, we know this man personally. You understand what I'm saying? And we know his people, you understand what I'm saying? And we know a lot of people that know about him, that man is not no rap, let him out, you understand what I'm saying? So they got me out of, you know, protective custody. And one of the persons' name, and one of the persons was, you know, was, 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 was um, Peter Rolock. He's the father of Pistol Pete, you understand what I'm saying? Uh, the sex money murder, you know, bloods in New York, and stuff like that. There, other one, while I was right, he on um, Guy Fisher's case. So these are two reputable individuals, you understand what I'm saying, spoke up for me, letting everybody know, man, that man ain't no rat. Y'all think it's crazy? You know what I'm saying? Because if I was a rat, believe me, I wouldn't be in jail. You know what I'm saying? As much stuff I know, you understand what I'm saying? As much stuff I done did, you understand what I'm saying, for individuals, you know what I'm saying? I got a lot to tell, but I ain't, I ain't, I ain't cut like that. You know what I'm saying? Let's go back to the far of me being a narcissist, right? Now, when I wrote was writing the book, I knew that they would, you know, probably or possibly could use the book against me in court. You understand what I'm saying? But because of the way that the streets was going, you know what I'm saying, this gang man was, you know, was doing, you know, a lot of stuff that, you know what I'm saying, was wild and crazy. I was sort of like, yo, you know, it's the older generation, it was the older generation, you know, responsibility to try to guide the younger generation in a more positive way. You understand what I'm saying? And we failed them. You understand what I'm saying? So to try to take responsibility for some of the failure, you understand what I'm saying, that we, you know, cause for them. You know, I said, I wrote the book trying to give them, you know, some insight on it. If you're going to do it, you understand what I'm saying, do it right. Don't do it wrong. You know what I'm saying? So take it to another level. You understand what I'm saying? So I basically, like, sacrificed myself to try to give them some insight on if you're going to get yourself involved in this here, then go about doing it, you know what I'm saying, in a positive or constructive way with the view towards getting out of it eventually. You know what I'm saying? So actually the book is like a five part book. You understand what I'm saying? And it evolved into like, you know, they become militias and then they like, you know, helping to defend the country, you understand what I'm saying, from from, from drugs, you know what I'm saying, terrorism, you know, both home and abroad. You know what I'm saying? So it's a whole, you know, uplifting process to it. You know what I'm saying? They didn't give me a chance, you know what I'm saying, to um, to put out the whole book, but when I start to get out, then I'm gonna finish the whole five book series so that people could get the whole ball view of where I was going. I was just gonna take a negative, you understand what I'm saying, and transform it into a positive. But the book was a mixture of what's true, you know, some some some, some facts, and then uh, you know, a, you know, a mixture of some fiction stuff. So you know, so she took what she felt was true, and she used that, you know, um, against, me, you know, yeah, because she said like within the book, you know, say I, I I was um I came home and um. I was, um, you know, retaliating against, you know, the people who had testified against me at trial, 
you know, so they, so, so she was concerned with whether or not, you know, I was going to kill the two girls who testified at trial. I'm like, yo, they my friends, you know what I'm saying? I'm in contact with them now. They recanted their testimony on me. They not in fear of their life, you know what I'm saying? And she was like, oh, yeah, right. And um, she went to look for the affidavits where they recanted the testimony. She couldn't find them. And that was because I didn't file it in the First Circuit. I filed it when I was in Florida in the 11th Circuit because you had to file an actual innocent claim in the state in which you was incarcerated at the time. So when she didn't see the affidavits from them, you know, um, agreeing to allow me to use their name and tell the story, she, you know, felt that I basically that I was lying, and then she used that to basically deny my release, you know? Uh, that's how that came. That was, that's how all that went down. Oh, yeah, one more thing I want to um, speak on, right, is the fact that, you know, it was stated that in court, you know what I'm saying, that I, I, I cried in court when I was in court. And, um, in regard to that, you know, I did get choked up in court, you know what I'm saying, and sit in a chair, right? And at the time, and, you know, sometime after that, I didn't actually know know why, you know, whether it was out of, you know, my, the anger because of the fact that, you know, the, 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 the two dudes was ratting on me, and they was trying to prevent me still, you know, to, to come home after, you know what I'm saying, 27 years. They still, you know what I'm saying, was, was, was trying to keep, keep me in prison for the rest of my life, you know what I'm saying, you know, and I was, you know, and I wanted to, to be with my kids and my grandkids and my family and, and, and you know what I'm saying, to return to society and, you know, and do something positive, like to say, you know what I'm saying? So I don't actually know why I got choked up like that, you know what I'm saying? You know, you know what was that, a, the anger or just a, the disappointment of not being released, you know what I'm saying? But recently, um, like say about two weeks ago, I had... Um, um, I came across a book that a friend of mine had, and he was getting ready to turn in, and the book fell my way. And when it fell my way, I took that as a sign for me to read the book. And the name of the book was called Kings, Warriors, Magicians, and Lovers by two psychologists. One was named Robert Moore, and another one was named um, Douglas Gillette, right? And they um, were professors in psychology and, you know, the call jugging psychology, right? This call is from a federal prison. Those four qualities are the qualities that each one of us is supposed to have. And in the quality of, of the lover is that, you know, you have love for, you know, your people, you know what I'm saying, for the world, you know what I'm saying? So I related that to the reason why I got choked up in there, you know what I'm saying, is because of the fact, like, I'm at the stage where the lover in me was, was, was awoken and that, you know, I became, I become somewhat more sentimental towards things because of the love for life. You understand what I'm saying? The love for, you know, my people. You understand what I'm saying? The love for my family. You understand what I'm saying? And that's what I end up associating it to. You know what I'm saying? Because even like now, you know, like, I catch myself when I like watch movies of slavery, you understand what I'm saying? I catch myself getting choked up. You know what I'm saying? Like when I watch movies of, of, of black pride, like when we've been awards or the certain achievements that, you know, our people are attained, you know, I find myself getting choked up, you understand what I'm saying? Because they're like, I'm like, yeah, you understand what I'm saying? That's us. You understand what I'm saying? That's my people. You understand what I'm saying? And I realize now, you know, what it is, you know, what it is why, it, you know, I be getting choked up like that. And that's because of the love of it in me. You know, and that's a good book for you know for people to read. You know, what I'm saying because it gives you an understanding of yourself and the transitions that you know you go through in your growth and in your development. You know, yeah, but you know, yeah, I, I just I just wanted to, you know wanted to get that off. You know what I'm saying? And I have no shame and shed no tears. At, you know, at all. Anyway, I've been getting locked up since I was 11 years old. I did um three bids in juvenile joints and one in um adult before I did this. They got this federal sentence. So the time doesn't bother me. Some people do the time, and some people let the time do them. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not one that's going to let the time do me. I'm going to do the time. So, you know, I've I, I disciplined myself with my time. You know what I'm saying? I educated myself with my time. You know what I'm saying? And I trained myself with, you know, with my time for the things that I wanted to do. Constructive to donate and contribute to society for when I got back out there. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it basically didn't really have any, like, you know, you know, bad effect on me to where, like, I was being stressed, I'd be stressed out or, you know, things like that, you know. Nah, I'm not going to do no bit like that. You understand what I'm saying? You know, I'm going I'm to handle mine, you know. Uh, but, so, you know, but other individuals, like I say, you know, it affects different individuals different ways, you know. The petitions are to Congress, right, there's three of them, you know what I'm saying? One is a petition to change the form of the government. 
talking about republic form of government, which means that it's a government um, ran by our elected representatives. You know, and, and so the people are so dissatisfied with the way our elected representatives are handling the government, you understand, saying that's about time that we try another way. You understand, saying and another way that we should try is a democratic form of government. And a democratic form of government is government by the people, exercised directly by the people or through their elected representatives. You understand, saying because our politicians and elected officials, they're not doing what we want. They're not doing things how we want things done and what things we want to be done. They're busy, you understand, saying, catering to their own personal interests and goals, you understand, saying, and the, the personal interests of, you know what I'm saying, of, of the rich and the wealthy, you understand, saying, and things like that. And we get, you know, the show that the stick. So it's about time for us to take control of our lives, you understand, saying, you know, for what the Constitution was actually created for, you understand, saying, so that we can experience true liberty and in the pursuit of happiness. And we're not getting that under our present government. You know what I'm saying? So I'm submitting a petition for signatures on the Action Network um, website for people to give away signatures to present to Congress to have a hearing on it. And say, like, yo, we want to run the government ourselves. You understand what I'm saying? Be a self-governing government, a self-governing, self-governing democracy. You understand what I'm saying? Because the United States is really an experiment. And for the last four or five hundred years, we've been experimenting with a republic form of government. This is basically what the, um, the Romans had a republic form of government. You know what I'm saying? Their Senate ran everything for the people. You understand what I'm saying? And they be, you know, and then we see what happened with the Roman Empire. You understand what I'm saying? It collapsed because of the abuse and the corruption and the malpractice of the Senate. You understand what I'm saying? So when they came here to the United States when they first established it, because the people were fundamentally illiterate and wasn't educated, and, and so the elective representatives took the responsibility of running the government for them until the people were educated enough actually to govern themselves. Because the plan of the United States is for an enlightened democracy. You understand saying where people have the capacity to perceive the, the, the real nature of things. You understand saying which presently because of the deficiencies that they have, the cognitive deficiencies that they have, that they weren't able to. See what I'm saying? So that's what we need to be doing doing now. You know, concentrate on what you're know, on, 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 on trying to do now, experiment with now, to see um, what could be become of that. Because, you know, like I said, things aren't being done in the best interest of the people and the best interest of the, interest of the country. You know what I'm our, our democracy, our country, everything is collapsing. You know what I'm saying? It's deteriorating. It's, you know, it, it, it's, it's destroying itself. And we got we to gotta stop that. You know what I'm saying? Because we're the greatest country in the world, you understand know what I'm saying? And we are, we are the, uh, what they would say, the world order. Other countries and stuff try to emulate, imitate us and want to be like us. But at the rate we're going now, we're losing all that. You understand know what I'm saying? China is trying to, you understand, know to become the new world power and be the paradigm for all other countries and stuff to emulate, you know? And then the other petition that I, that I, that I, that I prepared, you know what I'm saying, is for Congress to enact legislation to grant women the right of abortion. You know what I'm saying? Because I be hearing on the TV nowadays that you have these young girls, they are choosing uh, what they call sterilization rather than going through unwanted pregnancy. You understand? So incense pregnancy or rape pregnancy or pregnancy that they just don't want and aren't ready for. That would create some type of financial burden, you know, or, or mental burden on them. You understand? Saying? And they're being deprived of this natural right. You understand what I'm saying? The Roe versus Wade Supreme Court case was overturned because it was based on the privacy concerns. You know, since I can't imagine that was for the you know, um, doctor patient, you know, confidentiality or women to say like, yo, you know, how do you even know that we are wanting abortion or seeking abortion unless somebody is infringing on our privacy? You know, I haven't read the Roe versus um, Wade case, but like I said, I know it's based on privacy. You understand saying where the petition that I'm popping is for Congress to enact legislation, you know, saying guaranteeing women that this call is from a federal prison. The, the civil and constitutional rights, you understand, saying, to choose what's best for them. You understand what I'm saying? So I filed that one of the other petitions. And then the third petition is to enact, you know, um, legislation to enact a uh, code of ethics for the Supreme Court. You understand, so term limits for the Supreme Court, impeachment procedures for the Supreme Court. They have none of these things, you understand, saying, to, for us to be, 
to oversee them or to oversee them. So they pretty much make the decisions that they want to do and doing what they want to do in the interest of, like, you know, um, the wealthy or big corporations and without giving us our just too. Yes, yes, yes. So we need to put something in place yes, yes, to protect those against those violations by the Supreme Court. Yes, yes, yes. When they're not making decisions in the best interest of the people in the country. You understand what I'm saying? And, 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 and we need to change that. You know what I'm saying? And, and those procedures aren't, you know, enacted in the Constitution. So then when they're not enacted in the Constitution, then those rights and authority that we have is given to the people because actually the people are the supreme sovereignty of this country. You understand what I'm saying? And what does sovereignty mean? We are the supreme power of this country over legislation, you know what I'm saying, over the president. You know what I'm saying? Over the, the elected branch of the government, over the judiciary branch of government, and over the executive branch of the government. This is a country supposed to be by we the people. And those are what my petitions are about. They own the act they up on the Action Network website, you understand know saying for signature. And the majority and if we get the majority of the votes, then by constitutional then by then by constitutional law, then they have to respect and honor that and grant what the people want. You know what I'm saying? So this is something for, you know what I'm saying, for the people to really look at and for other countries to really see that we are truly about a democracy. You understand what I'm saying? And if they, you know, if it's truly the right to win, you know what I'm saying? Because if this is what the people want, then this is what they're supposed to be given. If you'd like to learn or learn more about about our, about OUR, which stands for Our United Resources, <clears throat> go to our website, www.spiritofthetruth.info. And, it, and, it's not and it's not a subsidiary that we are starting. One of the things that we are doing is establishing a social economic system for the poor and the, and the lower class that creates jobs and equity investments that will increase income by $6,000 a year.